All right, guys, Omega TV back here with the day two action from the Efren Reyes Farewell Tournament in uh, Aiken, South Carolina at the amazing Rack and Grill 3. We've got Mr. Sean Webb. i got to get those names changed. Uh, we've got Sean Webb, which is this gentleman right here breaking. <laughs> He goes by skinny, so if you want to put skinny up there. He goes by skinny? Yeah. What's that? Uh, what's he, he did tell me that when that, he introduced me. Ain't that funny how, like, the biggest guys have the smallest names? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, over at Club Billiards in Kansas, um, the guy there, um, pretty large guy, he, he always went by Tiny. Right. So, um, right. I was going to say, most of them big guys go by Tiny. And yeah, I had a friend of mine a long time ago. Um, big guy like that, we used to call him Lunchbox, <laughs> <laughs> and I really don't know why. It just kind of stuck one day. All right, we're gonna get all this changed up for you guys, and we have a fresh scorecard. So um, this is a winner's side match. It's a race to nine. Sean S Sean Webb, otherwise known as Skinny, playing Roland Garcia. Which, if you don't know who Roland is, um, phenomenal player from the Philippines. Um, if you're familiar with Fargo, I think it's Fargo's right around 802. 802 is strong. <laughs> it's a super, super strong player. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm really excited, guys, because I was looking at the tournament bracket, and we may have, like, a, a super good match coming up. So if Mr. Efren Batarias wins his first, uh, wins his next match, we're going to have him and BJ Ussery. Yeah, that will be a matchup right there. And, uh, you know, we're, we're based out of Texas. Um, right. So people may not be super familiar with Mr. Usry. Um, yeah. Uh, he, he's a, well, you're a local guy. Uh, yeah. By the way, guys, this is uh, Calvin. Calvin's going to join me on commentary. He knows a lot of these local players. You're from here? Yeah, I'm from uh, I'm right here in the CSRA. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, I live, like, right outside of Aiken. Uh, so this is kind of like my new spot to go to all the time. Yeah, it's a super nice place. Oh, 15,000 yeah. square foot. Look at that jump shot. <laughs> Hey, if you wanted to send a message, that's the way to do it, right off the jump there. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, uh, no time to play around with that one. Yeah. Um, He's got good shape here to, uh, well, I guess he doesn't really need to break this out. Well, uh, uh, yeah, he's, he's definitely going to need to break it out. I think he's going to come in behind it. Yeah. He wanted to. Yeah, that's the way to come at that ball is from behind. Yeah, that's a, that's a great shot. Uh, so, yeah. uh, I watched Calvin play yesterday. Calvin's a super good player. Um, um you're too, you're too kind, too <laughs> kind. <laughs> uh, took, a, took a tough loss to uh, Jason Brown. People call him Jaybird. Yeah, I mean, um, you know. Another good I player. Kinda, I kind of dogged it against him, you know. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, man, uh, this has been fun so far. Um, everybody here has been really nice. Um, it's a great venue, and uh, it's turning out to be a great tournament. Yeah, I want to say that this is the uh, biggest pool room in the southeast right now. It's definitely one of the nicest ones. Uh, you know, all diamond tables. Um, he runs uh, he runs one one uh, bar table tournament a month. I think it's on the third Saturday. So if you guys are in the area and you want to check it out, come down. I think it's 522 York Street. Yeah, 522 York Street in Aiken, South Carolina. That's right. And if, if you're not familiar with Aiken, we're literally like 20 minutes from the Georgia border, which is where Augusta is. Um, it's where they play the uh, the big PGA tournament every year. Yeah, the Masters Golf Tournament. Yeah, um, and I don't know how they do it. It's hot out here. Yeah, big, big boy sweats. Well, I mean, so. I just I just got back from Texas myself, and I mean, Texas ain't <laughs> Texas no. ain't cold. <laughs> it's it's really weird, man. I, I was in Oklahoma uh, last weekend, and I got there on a Tuesday, right. um, and every day there I would wake up around. Uh, probably 7, 7.30 a.m., mm -hmm. and I'd walk outside, it'd be like 95. Yeah. And I've got a ton of work to do. Um, i got to get in the car and drive places, you know, just have to be out in it. The yeah. day we were set to leave, I can mm -hmm. sleep in a little late. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have to go outside. I, I do walk outside at around 10 a.m. It is 64 degrees and raining. <laughs> so mad. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, he, he's, I mean, he squatted that rock on that break there, but uh, something came around and kind of kicked it a little bit. But Yeah, he got um, a little kiss there. Yeah. What do, you, what do you think here? Maybe to the side and trying to squeeze right up in between the 10 and the, and the 5? Yeah. Um, or maybe, I don't know, he's, maybe he's looking at cutting it up. I don't know. Yeah, he's going to shoot this ball in the corner. 
Well, maybe. I don't know. He's playing it with top left, it looks so like. To the side yeah. Yeah, just like you said. Yeah. A little, a little far. Oh, I don't I, think. I don't know. I think I don't know if he was trying to come to that rail and back down. He was pointing the stick right there, so I'm guessing he was trying to go there and he just maybe underhit it a little He's bit. He's trying to leave for the breakout. I'm not sure Sean's gonna like this next shot. Oh. Well, he got a good kick off of that ball. Yeah, un yeah. unfortunate, uh, well, really uncharacteristic shot by Mr. Roland Garcia. Yeah, it is. This is his first match of the day, right? Yeah, 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 it is. It is. He played one last night, um, and this is his first match. Also, um, not that he has to worry about this kind of stuff, but it's also his first match on the TV table. That's right. Um, for any of us regular pool players, well, uh, the TV table can be a little intimidating sometimes. I think we're all human. I mean... You know, yeah. Everyone's oh, that's gone. a great shot. Yeah, but I mean, this league. Yeah, not a whole lot of payoff, but. Yeah. Was that Tim Ball going the side? Nah. I don't know. If he hits it pretty square, I think he might be able to pass it by the eight and could get lucky. Yeah, but you missed the shot. The bank. You playing a guy like this? I mean, you kind of, you kind of want to go for a shot like this, but you know, it is a sellout. But I mean, when you're playing top level players, you know. You're trying to get your games in quick, you know. Yeah. You don't want to get like it's tough. You don't want to get in a moving match with some of them, you know, because yeah, no. because you're not going to get the best of it. So, you know, sometimes maybe sometimes maybe going for the the high risk, high reward yeah. early on might be yeah. uh especially. I mean, if it lays, if you think it lays good, if you think it lays good, and uh, go for it. But I don't think he's shooting it. Yeah. yeah kind of double kiss. Watch the side pocket. Yeah, that's not, gonna, oh. that's not gonna help his cause there. <laughs> no, and he—I mean—he got a little fortunate with where it ended up, but Roland's gonna be able to get around the other side of that. Okay. <laughs> hey. For I don't. I mean, hey, he's an Asian guy, so he must know me. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's stereotypical. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Oh, I know. I know who this guy is. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Kenny? Yeah, I know who he is now. He he was in here last night. I, he usually has glasses on, so I didn't recognize. I can't even hardly see his picture. But yeah. Hey, yeah. Facebook's uh, uh, for for all the pretty girls that that uh, at, try and add me on Facebook. Facebook's deceiving as all get out. <laughs> oh yeah, well, I mean, you gotta be careful. I mean, that's a good run out there. I'm getting recruited every day from Al Qaeda with those kind of pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, big big win there, um, two zero, and Roland's just getting started, so. Uh, yeah, it's interesting, uh, you know, that they're doing break from outside the box to kind of give some of these, uh, you know, local players and, uh, you know, players that are below pro status a little bit of a chance because, you know, they break from inside the box. And, I mean, the, you know, they got – there's like five balls that are in play on this 10-ball break, you know, breaking from the side here, I guess, negates a lot of that, you know. Yeah, it's forcing you to change up the break. and. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, that's that's why they were that's why they do some of the rules that they do. They they're trying to level that playing field for these top top guys. That's right. Um, because for any of the really top players, um, they'll tell you that the break is the game. Yeah. If you can't get the good break, right, then your chances of winning the game are a lot slimmer. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, you know, at at their level, you know, they're all running out. You know, they're all running out you know at a high percentage so you know that break shot is so important especially you know if you can if you can get the racking down and if you can get you know give yourself a good rack and you know you can break for shape you know that's the biggest thing see yeah. a lot of these guys in the 10 ball you know they're breaking and then they send that one ball down to the corner the two balls behind the one go on the side and then the two wing balls come around and go back down to, to their opposing corners you know so you got five balls in play actually you got you got the two that are yeah. the two that are uh, behind the nine. So really seven. Yeah, they're like one rail. They're one rail straight backs. You know, if you hit that, like I don't know if you've seen Corey Corey Dual hit that oh, symmetrical yeah. break. You know. Yeah. I mean, you know that just tells you that the ten ball break actually has 
more balls in play, they're just harder to get there, you know. Yeah. But you have a higher, you have more balls, a higher probability. But you know, like the nine ball, for instance, you know, the one and the nine. I mean, the one and the wing ball. You know, you can pretty much. One in the side, wing ball in the yeah. corner. You know, I, I've got a, uh, I've got a good table at my house, a pretty tight table. Um, we generally use an Accurac. Uh, oh, he went for the. Massey. Yeah, almost got there too. You what know, a bad attempt. You know, I, you play with carbon fiber. I do. Yeah. Very difficult one, to mass hit a ball you know, with carbon. Yeah, it's, it's really tough because you know the ball doesn't swing out. It, it kind of stays on a straighter line. Yeah. <laughs> one day I was playing this guy and uh, we were playing in a bar. And I had a mass A shot, and I put my cue down and grab a bar stick, and he goes, what are you doing? And I said, I'm about to hit this mass A shot. And he says, why don't you hit it with your cue? I said, oh. I said, it's real Not tough. Not with carbon. <laughs> yeah, everybody can mass A with, you know, wood, though. Wood, I mean, you grow up playing that way, so it's a whole lot easier. It's yeah. more familiar, to put it that way. When uh, A funny story. So when I first got my carbon fiber shaft, I had a, uh, a pretty big tournament that I was um, probably a favorite to win. Oh, uh, yeah? And I got my carbon... Uh, I think three weeks before that, right. and it, it pained me, but I literally stuck it in my bag and didn't touch it for three weeks yeah. because uh, I'd, I'd heard from everybody that, you know, it's it's a pretty big swing right. to learn how to use it. Yeah, well, uh, in, in uh, what was it, 2017, I think it was, yeah, 2017 or 2016, I can't remember, it was one of those years, uh, it was my... It was my first or second year at the Derby, and that's when they were rolling out with those carbon fibers. Yeah, right? the Revo, right? Yeah, and, uh, and you know, I stayed, I played in the <laughs> tournament, and, uh, you know, I didn't really do much all week. And then, you know, I decided, hey, you know, it's the last day of the tournament. I'm going to go. I've been, you know, at their booth checking it out, me and Josh Roberts. And, uh, you know, on the bar table, it, you know, I was hitting all these shots that before I had so much trouble with spin, you know, like, you know, at different speeds too you know and so on the bar table i mean i was making shots i was like man this is gonna make me a, a pretty strong player you know or at least it's gonna give me more shots in my bag and then uh just like you you know then you, you get in a competition and you, you're used to shooting it a certain way and then all of a sudden you hit it and yeah, it, i mean it's like dead that. in the face you know you hit the ball dead in the face and you know with no allowance it's it's really weird really weird because it's it's almost like they're deceivingly uh they're very deceiving on how they play. Right. You pick one up, you've never touched one. Mm -hmm. You may pick it up and hit some incredible shots. Yeah, just right out the junk. But a week after that, you're going to be struggling to yeah. make shots that you make yeah. all the time. Yeah, because, I mean, uh, the way I always, you know, I always tell a lot of players, like, whenever I was the first person in the area really to have one, you know, and people were asking me about it and stuff, and I said, man, you know, it, it, it almost, I feel like is a, something that is good for somebody when they first learn how to play pool because you know you're not having to deal with that much deflection that much swerve you know yeah. it's kind of like a closer to what you think should happen you know what i mean but if you've been playing pool for a long time you know you're whether you're aware of it or not you know you you make those adjustments you know and uh yeah so that's why i, I like a a player that you know is just learning how to play or get just getting into the game. I, mean, I feel like they should pick up a carbon fiber shaft because yeah. it's, I, I hate to say that it's limiting, but you know when you're playing with wood, you know you can do so much, so many different things, and sometimes that's too much for a beginning player. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you know it's 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 uh it's weird. I, I heard somebody talking about it outside earlier. Mm -hmm. Not um, bad it's. He said, you know, if I was, if I had somebody that, that was just learning pull, I would tell him never pick up a carbon fiber. Really? Um, I'm, I'm the complete and, opposite. And I, I agree with you, actually. I yeah. think, um, you know, I learned on wood. I've been playing for a long time. Well, that's because all we had, but, you know, it was really Yeah. Um, when, uh, I remember when fiberglass came out. Yeah, the Q-Tech uh, fiberglass. I had a Q-Tech fiberglass <laughs> Q. Um, it made absolutely no difference. Yeah. Um, because well, it's shot so oddly. Well, I think I think they were fiberglass, but they're like they're just like fiberglass cores. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. And then so basically, you have a wood shaft with a fiberglass core inside of it, yeah. or a graphite core or something like that. Graphite, yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember a buddy of mine, uh, so happy he bought a graphite Q. I can't remember who it was from. It may have been through Q Tech or, or maybe Players. Um, but uh, he chipped his shaft because it's got that uh, that graphite oh, coating. Uh, coating on it, yeah. and literally a piece of his 
shaft chipped off. Uh -huh. And so, like, if we nick, you know, we nick our stick, we can take it to somebody. Right. They can work the nick out yeah. or, or whatever. Put a little bit of water on it, raise the grain. Yeah, just, yeah. And then take it back down. If you uh, if you chip your, <laughs> your fiberglass <laughs> or graphite shaft, you're yeah. in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> you might as well just throw it away, buy a new one. Yeah, really? But, um... You know, carbon is one of those things that it's very, very difficult to learn if you've played uh, on wood for a long time. Right. Um, and my, in my, in my little experience with it, it was just one of those things where I'd already spent the money on it, so I wasn't going to turn back. You know, I'd played with the Barnhart and uh, and other cues before that, though, and uh, you know, I was always looking for that, just that little bit of edge, you know. And then uh, after I got acclimated to it, you know, then I was able to hit a lot of shots that before were, you know, shots that you would, do yeah, I, I hate to say dog, but you just don't know the, the right allowance for yeah. it, you know, because under under pressure, you know, sometimes you're spinning that ball and you don't realize you're hitting it at a speed where it's going to do something different, you know. Yeah. Well, and, you know, if, if anybody ever took the time to really uh, understand the physics behind the ball, you know, it's not just about where you're putting that, that tip, right? Right, there's um, elevation it's involved. Elevation, speed, speed of acceleration. That's right. Um, you know, how hard you're you're pushing through it. That's right. Um, it depends on how you're applying English too, you know. Um, you know I don't wanna say to, to good players, but the majority of players that I see that apply spin, you know, with high level of success, they they're they're kinda, you know, uh, they're starting from like center and kind of like you know I guess they call it like backhand English you know but yeah. but it's it's like you know you're falling on the shot with with that English already but you know you're coming at it from I guess if you were to picture a circle and then a cone coming back to you, you yeah know, you're staying within there you're not like lining up in like a parallel fashion yeah it's not a lane it's yeah it's, it's not more a lane. of a that's more right. of a cone yeah because yeah, that lane when you line up like that you know you're creating you're creating a ton of deflection when you do it that way. Because sure. first of all, you're starting off on the wrong line, and your alignment's wrong to begin with when you start out that way, you know. Well, now skinny here, he's got a. Looks like he's about to bust out the jump cue. Yeah. Uh, maybe after that masse shot that he tried a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a pretty thin lane between the six and the nine. So. Uh, yeah, actually, I mean, yeah, you can jump this ball, but. Uh, you know, you got to be pretty, pretty good and be able to play shape with the jump. You know, right here. I mean, I hate to say it, but like for me, I'm kicking this ball, kicking this ball, and cutting the two towards the left, left hand side rail, wow. <laughs> and then sending the cue ball back behind this wall. You know. But, yeah, uh, I mean, on that shot, I'm, I'm probably gonna jump it, um, mm -hmm. but I, I consider myself a, I consider myself a pretty good jumper. Mm -hmm. um, I probably make 40% of the balls I shoot at. Right. That's that shot right there. It's thin. It may be a little bit lower percentage, so yeah. we'll drop it to 25%. Right. But I'm trying to cut that ball with a little bit of drag and come, right. you know, two rails over. It's interesting, like, uh, you know, like everyone's preference or shot. You know, I know yeah. a lot of people just go straight to that jump cue. You know, but a lot of times, you know, that kick lays good, like the one he just had. If he just kicks it on the right side, you know, he sends it, he sends it up table, and then he puts he's got you know five balls on the right hand side that he can get to with yeah. the cue ball, you know. And it's all about the comfortability, That's you right. know. Um, Efren will tell you um, he may not like the jump cue, but he owns one. Right. I mean, you so have he to. He uses one. I mean, in, in today's game, I mean, anything that anything that gives you any kind of advantage, you know, you've got to at least at least have it in your bag just in case, you know. For sure, and then the same thing way with the kicking. I I prefer the jump cue, right. but uh, I, I know how to kick, and um, you know I've spent a lot of time working on that diamond system and right. and figuring out you know what my angles are for kicks. Yeah, I think so. I think you, uh, you know like like you're saying you know knowing the diamond system gives you a nice a good reference point you know. Yeah. And then uh, from there you know then then it's all about you know how are you going how do you see how do you see the shot you know when you're kicking at it and what kind of spin what kind of where are you going to hit the cue ball at to get to get that line you know for sure and sometimes it comes down to that gut feeling too you know yeah uh earlier today um i played a a, a guy over here um and I, i'm feeling good i i've i hit a good break i'm on the middle of a run out I ended up just a little funny on my uh, on my ten ball. It's like right off the rail right here, mm -hmm. 
And, uh, you know, I didn't really think about it. I was just really comfortable at the table. I looked uh-huh. at it, and I fired the cross bank. Yeah. And he said, why would you shoot it like that? And I, I looked at him, and I said, man, honestly, I just felt it. Like, right. I felt good about the shot. Yeah, we were just talking about that back there in the back, you know. Uh, Comfortability. Those guys, those guys are back there uh, playing playing some high stakes uh, one pocket. And, uh, you know, everybody, every you know, playing one pocket, there's, there's probably a bunch of different ways to shoot a shot, you know, or a bunch of different shots that you can shoot in that moment. Oh, yeah. But, you know, uh, you know, it's it's really whatever shot you see first and, you know, you're – How you feel about yeah, it. How you feel about it because, you know, the guy, the guy shot it shot at his hole a minute ago and, you know, he had balls – he had balls and the other guy had balls in his hole, you know. So, you know, if he feels like he's going to make it, you know, he's got to shoot. Yeah, and it's, it's going to come down to, uh, you know, a lot of times as a player – we, you know, you know how you play. That's right. When you walk up to the table, generally the first shot you see is what you're going to want right, to shoot. Right, yeah. Um, I play a lot of scotch doubles. Me and my scotch doubles partner play uh, a, a very, very uh, similar game. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of times we see the same stuff. Um, so it's nothing for us to, you know, see it and and work together. Every once in a while, though, he'll see something that I don't see. Right. Um, and it's 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 really just about walking to the table and and seeing what that's you right. see first, and that's what you're comfortable with. Uh, that last shot, that not not the six ball, but the shot that Roland played. The five. To get on the five, you know, you notice how he went like up table and back down. Yeah. You know, it's not an accident that he he comes back down on that line and runs into the back of the nine ball. You know, he's playing for that specific line right there. You know, now he might he. He Ooh. might go past it, but no matter what, he's going to hit that. He's, he's going to cut nine. this ball with outside. Look at that. Yeah. It's, that's phenomenal control right there. If I shot that shot, I don't know where my cue ball would be. Look at how long his bridge is. Yeah. Um, I worked with him yesterday. You know, there's there's something. Uh, there, there's a pretty big debate in the pool world. So what do you look at last? Do you look at the cue ball or the object ball? I look at the cue ball last, and everybody tells me, everybody tells me that, you know, You've got to look at the object ball. You got to look. Well, yeah, I mean, looking at the object ball, you know, it'll give you confidence and and pocket in the ball, but you're never going to be able to hit the cue ball accurately. Like you see these guys, like uh, like Roland and you know any of the yeah. top Filipino players. You know, a lot of they. Here's the thing. Subconsciously, you might even be able to convince yourself that you are looking at the object ball last, but really, which one is the main focus? Which one are you more focused on? Because one of them's got to be in the peripheral. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you're looking, if you think you're looking at the object ball, yeah, but it's not like you're blind to the cue ball either. Yeah, I mean, and and so Josh Filler got asked that question, mm-hmm. um, and he said both, and the guy didn't understand. Yeah. He said, well, you're kind of you're focusing on one, but you're still right. seeing the other. Now, Roland, I was I was working with him the other day, and uh, Roland is a firm believer. I've always been the object ball guy. Yeah. Uh, I have to know that I'm hitting the ball yeah. into the pocket um, to make it. And he told me, he said, you have to look at the cue ball. Right. I said, I said, why? And he said, because you play good enough that you should be able to aim. Once you're on, once you once you fall on the shot, you should be you, there. Your bridge hand, your bridge hand is going to dictate your alignment. Yeah, you know what I mean. And uh, so once you get down, you know you are you've already done all your aiming from a standstill. You know when you're standing above the shot, you know you've already determined what's going to happen. I want to pocket the ball here. The cue ball's going to go there. Now when you get down, you know it's a matter of cueing. That's why snooker players. They hit the balls. They're they're so focused on their technique, you know what yeah. I mean. But yet they pocket balls. They're considered the best ball pocketers in the world, you know what I mean. But yet they they're so focused on how well they actually cue the cue ball, you know what I mean. So yeah, I mean Roland's dead on. You know, whenever you see these guys that are able to shoot shots like that one he shot a minute ago and shoot it with like such finesse, it's because they're not letting the object ball distort their vision and yeah. and their alignment, you know. A lot of times when you're under pressure, like a shot like that, and you're not comfortable with, what's the first thing you do? You hit it and you stand up and you look to see what happens. Yeah. Right? But those guys, you know, they stay down, and it's not because they're trying to stay down. It's because they're looking at the cue ball. So they've already determined that, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm made the ball already. Now I just got to make sure I hit the cue ball accurately so that I get the right line. And that's exactly what he told me. He said, if see, you're looking at the object ball, you, you may have aimed 
mm-hmm. bottom left on that ball. But by the time you hit but it. But by the time you hit it, you may be hitting more like center left or more like, uh, you know, just bottom. He said you have to, the most important thing is getting to the next ball. You already know how to make the ball. Right. Now you have to learn how to focus on cueing the ball while making the ball. Because, I mean, honestly, if you, you make the ball and you misshape, what good did what it do? Good is it? Yeah. You, yeah. you took an you took a ball off the table for your opponent, hey, listen, which makes it easier the, for them to run. The way that I, the way that I teach guys is, you know, when it comes to that, you know, I don't I don't force anybody to do anything a certain way. You know, I, I watch a player play, and then you know I see what he could do better. Oh, that's that's tough, an man. uncharacteristic miss there. Yeah, that's tough there. He, sometimes you know when you're shooting those shots like that. Um, he also overrolled his shape, so right. So uh, he's trying he's trying to do something specific, and sometimes uh, that spin will catch you like that, you know. Yeah. And make you make you uh, make you hit it a little bit full in the face like that. But uh, yeah, like I was saying, uh, you know, just think about it from this perspective, right? Like if you, <laughs> you know, talking about golf, but you know, a, a golfer he lines up to the shot, right? And then he doesn't look at the hole that he's hitting it to. He looks yeah, at the no, golf he's ball. He's, he's looking he at looks the at the ball. golf ball, right? Because he wants to hit the golf ball accurately, and he just trusts his alignment. Same yeah. thing with pool. I mean, I know you're in golf. You're only hitting one single ball, you know. But same thing. Same well, same principle. And and I got I got another reference. Um, so it said when you hunt deer, you look down the scope. Do you, do you then raise your head to look at the deer before you shoot it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, no. You you have to look at where you're hitting. That's right. Um. Now Skinny plays these shots pretty good. Yeah, see. Uh, he played a good shot there. He's going to come up a little short on the four ball, it looks like. Uh, oh, he right. came out all right. right. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's shaking his head, but, I mean, he's good here. He's just got to keep his keep his composure. You yeah, know? you see some of these guys, and they get a annoyed at shape, you know. Um, obviously, he's definitely happy that he, that he made the ball, right. and he's got an opportunity to make this yeah. ball. But uh, he's shooting, he he shooting this ball left-handed. Uh, you uh, know, you're close enough to the ball. It looks a little awkward. Look at his elbow. Yeah. Yeah. You're close enough to the ball here, but, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> if you shoot good left-handed, by all means, go for it. You know what I mean? But uh, I don't do, I, I'm I don't firm do be- it. I'm from ber- a firm believer in use your equipment. If you've got a bridge and you've got an extension, use it. You know, I watched Tony. One of the things I learned watching Tony Watson, as fast as that guy shoots, you know, when he's stretched out, that's when he takes his time. And if yeah. a guy like that is going to take his time, I mean, that tells you as an amateur player, you better be doing the same thing, yeah. you know. Well, it's, you know, it's uh, it's almost common sense, you know. Yeah. Uh, the harder it is, the more you need to focus on right. it, and focusing does take time. Right. And what's the point? What's the point of making that great shot and and just creeping into shape? And you know, I, I hate to say fortunate, but you know, you you got to take advantage of your fortune whenever it comes around. You know what I mean? Don't don't just get up there all willy nilly and hit that ball stretched yeah, no. out. You know. Not at all. Yeah. Now he's, you know. I hate to say this, but like you know, guys get like frustrated and stuff when this happens, man. You know, it's it's done, man. It's already there. You just got to go ahead and uh, accept that, that that's where it's gonna be at, and then come with the shot, you know. See, now personally, I like trying to play the two way here, try and bank the six ball with a little bottom left to throw the six ball towards the pocket, mm-hmm. and also try and make the eight ball. Okay. Um, a little insurance policy, I guess. Yeah. Um, he also he has a very phenomenal fa- safety by just playing the six ball behind the eight nine. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, if this six ball if this six ball does pass the eight though, uh, it is worth shooting at like this. Well, not like you know if you can if you can spin your if you can spin your rock, but not not in a forceful spin. You know you hit it and it twirls. You know you can hit it like that and it'll it'll catch the rail and yeah. it'll twirl upwards. You know you see Efren and people shoot shots like that. And it's because they're twirling the ball to and get it's there. It's the manipulation of the yeah. of the ball. Yeah, it's not it's not like you're hitting it and forcing that that ball to kind of propel out there with spin, you know. When something that uh, I've always try to tell people, say anytime you're gonna do something special with the cue ball, mm-hmm. you look at these guys. Ninety-five percent of the time, they're gonna hit the ball easy because you can't force manipulation of the cue ball. That's right. That shot right there. He yeah. manipulated that ball to make it because it, it, he had to throw it. That's right. He didn't hit it hard. If he'd have hit it hard, his he, manipulation would have gone out the window. Right, and then he wouldn't hit the ball any harder than that, and then he hits the nine ball on the wrong on the wrong side, and it and it gets funny, you know. But yeah. he hits it at that speed. He hits it at that speed so that he can nick it on the right side, on the the side that he wants to to leave himself a shot, you know. Yeah. Exactly. Um, 
the manipulation of the cue ball is big. Hey guys, just a reminder, if you want to get involved in our uh, our raffle, it's $10 per ticket, and you're going to send that to moneymatchpromotions at gmail.com using PayPal, or you can send it to Cash App to money sign Phil MMP. That'll get you involved in that $10 per ticket, and it's a uh, Acme Sport Case, a Predator Q, as well as a uh, Jump Q, all matching colors. If you like that yellow and black, it's a super pretty combination of colors. Um, you can send those over right now to get involved in that raffle. And, well, well big dry break here, and he's got a lot of opportunity here. His toughest, yeah, his it's, toughest setup is a 5-7. Yeah, he's got this combo, and uh, this combo plays easy, you know. Uh, yeah, especially if he's on this side of the... That's right, because he doesn't yeah. play for shape. Let's see what he does. Here. He's just got to um, just gotta really play this. Oh, yeah. and actually that's even better if he got if it. If it passes. No, oh. I don't think it passes now. I mean, he no. can play He can play. He's got the care on yeah, yeah, he's got the care on yeah. uh, the, the big key on this shot, I think, is making sure that he has good shape on the three yeah. ball so he can create his shape for the four. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a, I think it's a little bit of a... Uh, laps in judgment there to go for that breakout there. It's, it wasn't really necessary. I know that I hate shooting combos, but that one laid in a good If spot. he maybe would have looked at the combo, maybe he would have yeah. changed his mind on what he was doing. Yeah. I don't think he realized that the combo was that easy. Plus, he's down 6-1. He's down I mean, he, <laughs> yeah. he, he's, just trying to, he's just trying to find a spot or settle into this, this game real now quick. Yeah, I don't like this. Um, I would have preferred just to stop that ball and kind of go around the world. Um, you know, make the yeah. three ball and come up right. here. Um, because now he's got to work for the four ball because I don't think it, I don't think it, it doesn't pass the seven no, five. He's going to play it in the same pocket. Like that. Yeah. See, but I mean, this is tough though. The more you move the cue ball. All this, all the, no, he's, he's in a good spot. If he wasn't on the rail here, he could play for this uh, little bump on the five ball, yeah. you know. But now that he's on the rail, you know, uh, this, uh, <laughs> This definitely plays a whole lot tougher because you know, if I you're trying to spin the ball on the rail, oh, a lot tough. of things can happen because you, you're elevated. Especially using carbon. Yeah, you're elevated yeah. and you don't even really realize it. <laughs> so that ball, if you're hitting it with outside, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit thin, you know. Uh, and he's going to go for the bump too. Oh. Right, he came out all right. Yeah, he yeah. came out smelling yeah, like a rose on that one. Let's, uh, let's find that's the pool gods and say thank you to them. Well, that was, I mean, you know, if he planned to hit the back side of it like that, that's pretty sporty, you know. I'm I not sure he planned it the back side. Well, I mean, let's give <laughs> if he did, though, it. hey, that was still a phenomenal shot yeah. either way. And now just hold your composure here. You know, uh, everything's everything's in a good spot. You know, everything one one shot leads to the next pretty much once you get on the seven. He, he <laughs> gave himself a little angle here, but I actually like this. I'm going to play it with inside, and that's what he's doing. Yeah, he's going to come um, down three. Yeah. Just like that. That's a great shot right there. Yeah, this is, look, he's He's, he's, he's not side. happy with it. But he he came out fine. Sometimes sometimes when guys throw their hands up and stuff like that, you know, I th I feel like it is a little bit of posturing, you know. But I mean, just take take the shot, you know. I yeah. Mean, nobody put it there but you. <laughs> exactly. I find myself a lot of times. Uh, uh, I I don't I don't really throw my hands up. I I don't do the you know I don't really get upset, but I will laugh at myself. Yeah. You and, know. And, and you know, I do the same. One know? of those situations like wow, how could you? How could you end up in the one right. spot you're not supposed to be in, or whatever? Yeah, I think uh, I think if the more honest you are about your game, you know, uh, the the faster you're gonna progress and you you're gonna enjoy the game a whole lot more than. Ouch. Anyway, now. See, all right, so you know, here's a little like kind of like mental thing, right? So you know, he's throwing his hands up every shot, like you know, on the shape and stuff like that. People don't realize, but that drains you mentally, you know, yeah. what I mean? because you're you're being negative on yourself and. For nothing, you know, you it's still the, have it's a the shot. thought process yeah, of I just it. messed up, I just messed up, yeah. I just messed up. But pros don't even hold themselves to that kind of standard. Yeah, time, you know what I mean. But I oh, mean, how what are we? What are we doing here? We got a little bit of curve action. What here. are we doing here? Curving for shape. That's a great shot. Yeah. Let's yeah. See if we can get a replay on that one. Yeah. We'll take a look at that one after this rack. Um. The other thing that uh, it's kind of getting to him is he's he hasn't made Roland shoot a single nine ball, or single ten ball, or single ten ball, yeah. Yeah. Um, except for maybe this one. Yeah. I was looking at it like he wants to shoot in the side, but this is a corner shot. I feel like all day, like that. Yeah. And y and you know uh, the thing is, you see how hard he hit that ball. Yeah. Most people are gonna try to roll that ball, but uh, uh, let it go. 
Well, you know. Especially when you're going back and forth across the table. Yeah, and, uh, you know, you hit the ball slow like that. I mean, a lot of bad things can happen. I mean, oh, yeah. Let's take a look at this uh, little yeah. mass A here. Super slick um, because that ball is pretty far out of the pocket. When we switch to the overhead, you'll see here. Yeah. That ball is pretty far out of the pocket. That's yeah. a super thin cut. Oh, yeah. Great shot. Um, yeah, you know, so uh, my big thing is so I run tournaments in East Texas um, for okay. some of our smaller areas. And uh, my big thing is, and people still do it, but my big thing is, um, you know, no concessions. Um, yeah, that's... Because it can, it can be... In unintentionally or intentionally, it, it can kind of be a move. Yeah, you know, people people talk about that sometimes. You know, I'm not going to make this guy shoot this easy one, then I'll make him shoot a tough one. You yeah. Know? But, uh, and as the player, you know, I, I've been in that situation where people have given me a couple ten balls, and then, uh, again, it shouldn't, but I think of it in my in the back of my head. I was like, oh, this is the first one he's made me shoot. But here's the thing, though. If, if you're aware of it, then, yeah, you know, it is a move. But let's just say you're just, you know, a guy that just started playing. Ball. Yeah, yeah. You don't know nothing about it. Man, you'd be thankful to get that. <laughs> hey, thanks, yeah. buddy. I ain't got to shoot the one. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, don't, sure. you never think of it as a move, so you really you're the only one that's, like, kind of, you know, uh, what is it? You're kind of making a move on yourself if you think about it that yeah. way. So I, I always tell people, I, you know, I'm pretty I like active. The, on I, like, I like the no concession rule because yeah. uh, they have it at the Derby that way. You know, yeah. like uh, no concession because, you know, people are there to – people have paid money to, to, exactly. to travel, to watch you play, you know. Go out there and let them play. You know, don't, don't just get out there. Like I remember watching like uh, – you know, some bar table matches with Hennessy and stuff like that. And, you he know. hit it, but he just barely yeah, tipped yeah. it. Where, like, <laughs> you know, after the break, they just sweep the balls down because they don't want to pay in quarters because they know the guy's going to run out. You yeah. Know? Something like that. But, uh, well, and, it, you know, it's kind of like, it's also value. You know, if we ran a, if we ran a pay-per-view tournament yeah. and then the guy split in the, in the finals yeah. and the finals didn't get played, you know, yeah. that's robbing your audience. Yeah, um, definitely. But uh, and then also like I believe when I sink a ten ball, so I run a drill where it's just the eight, nine, and ten, mm -hmm. and that's the only balls I use, and it's just a simple drill. It's it's to work on stop okay. and follow and draw. Right. Um, so I'm putting a a ball just right here, mm -hmm. and then my cue ball up here, and uh, I I stop the ball fifty times, uh, right. push forward fifty times, and then draw back fifty times. Right. But the key is. I only use the eight, the nine, and the ten because right. those are my money balls. Right. So I associate that with uh, with that drill. Yeah, it's like um, a, it's like your uh, what do you call it? Kind of like a it's a mental conf training confirmation. You yeah, know, yeah. You're reaffirming you're reaffirming that you know you're gonna make those specific goals. Yeah, goals. they're know? the important ones. Yeah, those are the ones that count. And so you know when somebody gives me that that eight, nine, or ten. Um, they're they're, like, they're robbing me. Yeah. I feel like they're robbing me because well, that, it's a confidence booster for me to sink the ten ball, well, to sink a, the nine ball. I had, a, I had a guy. I had a guy when I lived in Jersey. Uh, you know, he he wouldn't let you. He wouldn't, and we weren't even playing for anything. You know, but he wouldn't he wouldn't let you concede the nine ball. You know, he said I didn't work hard on this run out for you to for you to take Just away. Give it up. For you to take away the one thing that matters is the nine. You yeah. Know? So I mean. And it is. It can be a confidence booster, and it can it can really you know put you in a good spot. You know, even if you know Roland's winning six to one right now, right. Um, his next match, he may be playing somebody super tough, and he may not get the opportunity yeah. to uh, you know have that. Uh, maybe with Roland, it's not as bad. But for us regular players, oh no, Sean's not happy with that at all. Oh, definitely not. And that's a uh, he's having some bad rolls. Uh, you well, know, I guess I've missed a few games. Sorry, guys. We're yeah, at we're eight. Over, yeah, we're over here chit-chatting away. Yeah, we are. <laughs> uh, I'm just glad we kind of got stable on the stream. We were having some internet issues last night. Oh, yeah? Um, I think they said something about uh, maybe the internet provider was having issues, maybe an outage of some sort. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes it's air, you get some outages and stuff. Somebody runs into a, runs into a pole or something. Next thing you know, we're all on 3G, 2G. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no joke. <laughs> but uh, we, we kind of got it more stabilized, and we're, um, we're know, rocking and rolling. Have you noticed that Roland, uh, he started out breaking on this side, right? And he then swapped. In, in the middle of the match, he, he swapped over to the other side. Now he's back on this, on the hill game, you know. And it's something that he doesn't like. Yeah, um, a lot of times those balls, you know, 
where the spots at and where the racking area you know you you can rack the balls perfect but then there's a little dimple there you know and it's not yeah. always on the spot it's all it's sometimes it's on the back balls you know and uh that's and it's also, uh, you know, another big thing is the line to the rack. Right. You know, uh, there's a specific mark. spot. You know, maybe yeah. there's maybe there's a piece of felt that's just still, you know, it's it's right. not it's not a free piece. It's still stuck on, but yeah. maybe it's causing something. Yeah. And you know, uh, guys like Roland, they they see that stuff and they can uh, adapt very well. Yeah. Even Efren earlier, I think Efren changed his break midway through. Have you noticed? Have you noticed that? Uh, that ten balls sat on that same that same spot, kind of, uh, for a few games there after the break. Yeah, Roland just shot the ten ball straight down yeah. two racks ago. Yeah. Okay. Uh. You know when? I mean, we're chit chatting. You know what? I'm paying attention. Hey, <laughs> actually, so now that you mention this, I, when I was watching Fedor and Jeff DeLuna yeah. playing ten ball. Yeah. So this is eerily similar. So they're playing on a big table, so right. it's a little different. But every single time that Fedor broke, mm -hmm. we've got the eight ball here, and either or the, the I'm sorry, the ten ball here, and either the eight here or the nine there, or vice versa. Right. They always ended up in the same spot. Like I said, that ten ball break. It, I mean, if you're if you're hitting it consistent, symmetrical. Yeah, I mean it's symmetrical, man. Yeah. It, it'll come out. It'll come out that way. I mean, Corey. Corey, Corey Gould kind of, he, he, breaks, he breaks these things down for everybody, you know. And then, and then Shane perfected it. And well, Shane, Shane Shane's perfected got, Shane's, got, Shane's got multiple types of breaks that he can play yeah. with 10 ball, you know. Even last weekend, did you watch the Shane and Dennis match? I caught I caught a little bit of it. I don't know what I was doing that week, but <laughs> I caught a little bit of it. Uh, so Shane, Shane, for day one and most of day two, broke one specific way uh -huh. um and he was down for most of that that and was that day one was when uh he dennis, had, dennis runs a 10 pack or they'll yeah pack or he run the 10 pack yeah, yeah he ran a 10 pack um so midway through day two i asked shane about it and he said uh he said i got a text they told me i need to change my break right and so he started he was i'm not gonna call it a soft break but he was control breaking he's taking a little bit off of it yeah controlling it and then uh midway through day two you see him kind of smash through the balls right. and he's running into that pack a lot harder that shot um, that, that shot that skinny had right there i mean yeah he's losing it's it's tough to make balls when you're losing stuff but you know when you're jacked up over that shot i mean jacked up over a ball like it's that it's tough it's tough man i mean you can't get you can't get a good line alignment you know well and, and watch and what roll is going to do here is he going to push in between the 5 and the 10? Or is he pushing the 5 towards the 10? Never mind. I'm not sure that's what he wanted. I think I think what he was thinking there was that he's going to hit the 7 into the 10 and move the 10 into a better spot. Yeah. You know, and then work his way from there. But, yeah, he's just going he's just going to stick him here. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I don't know for sure, but I imagine that he's about to stick him here. I mean, this is this is center ball, a little bit of elevation, give it a little pop. He might be banking this ball. Oh, he is banking that ball. And I think he's kind of playing the two-way. I think yeah. he played it a little to the outside of the pocket. That way, if he misses, it leaves yeah, it on the top row. Yeah, but um, – yeah, so it, it's super strange with with the with the break, with the way Shane kind of changed everything, um, yeah. because it it really altered the path of the entire day. Right. Shane Shane starts off down thirty five to forty, and he ends eighty to sixty eight. Hey, listen, I mean, you know, I've heard a lot of people talk about like you know ever since Shane lost this match or whatever that Shane Shane ain't got it or whatever. Uh, man, I disagree. Huh, come <laughs> on, man. The guy the guy played two set. The guy played the uh, Dennis Arcola, two sets. He loses what, at most eight games. I don't even think it's that much. No, it's, it's like not. Six or so I, I, I have the I have the stat on this. Right. Four hundred and seventy-one games of nine ball. Right. Dennis is up six games. Yeah. I mean, how I mean, brutal is that? Meanwhile, a few years ago, he plays some ten ball and beats him by like thirty plus. Yeah. So I mean, whoever whoever's out there saying that kind of stuff, you know, hey, come on, chill out. <laughs> so what were we talking about a while ago, right there, and you kind of saw it. So when Skinny shot that ball, what you don't under, you know what a, a lot of uh, 
maybe newer players don't understand. You saw Roland, it kind of bounced the ball. When you're right. elevated like that and you have just a slight amount of top English, mm -hmm. it's almost as if you're putting a jump shot on it. Yeah, and well, it is bouncing that ball. Any so when you hit it softer, right. it still has that little bit of bounce, and right. it can alter the path of the cue That's ball right. really badly. That's right. Hey guys, you know, I don't know if you guys are paying attention, but my man knows what he's talking about right here. <laughs> I mean, anytime. A little bit. Anytime, yeah. I mean, even just a simple shot, like even if you level out and you got your hand on the rail, like like that, like that right there, and you hit it hard. I you can put shot that ball. You can put a coin right in front yeah, of the cue ball up. and uh, and uh, and hop right over it, you know. So I mean, that ball's jumping. Unless you hit it at a slow pace, that ball's gonna be skipping across the table no matter what. For sure.